Boys and girls, this is Sita Mrongai Children's Choir, and we're going to lead you in worship. Let's pray. Our, our fe- Heavenly Dear Father, we thank you for protection. We have arrived here safely, and as we're going to f- f- praise you, may you, may you, we welcome the Holy Spirit. We welcome your presence here, and I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Lord, for this very day that you've given us even to be in your presence, O God. Thank you, Lord, as we go forth to learn from your word, O God. We are praying for your guidance. We are praying that the Holy Spirit will teach us. And Lord, we are praying that you'll be with every child that is watching us, every child that is listening, O God, that your word will be power unto their lives, O God. Thank you, Lord, because you are good and you are gracious. Help us through the lesson, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everyone say, Amen. Help me to appreciate the praise and worship team for the good, good job that they have done. Let us appreciate them like this. Again. Well done, praise and worship team. Children, you are so welcome to today's lesson. And especially those that are listening to us or watching us for the, for the very first time. We are so happy to have you on board. Welcome. My name is Teacher Faith. I am happy to be your teacher. And before we go on with our lesson, I would like us to revisit what we learned the other time. Do you remember what Teacher Wilson taught you? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, yes. He taught us who the Holy Spirit is. And he said that the Holy Spirit is our friend. And he's the one that guides us and leads us even in our Christian walk. And today, children, we are still on with that series about the Holy Spirit. And especially 
in relation to our theme for this year, which is new territories, getting into new territories. That is our theme for this year, and we cannot get into the new territories without the help of the Holy Spirit. And today, our lesson today, we want to know why exactly did Jesus promise the Holy Spirit to the disciples? And why do we need the Holy Spirit in our Christian work? Praise the Lord, children. And just before we continue, I don't know, do you have your Bible? You have your notebook and a pen? Yes, you are supposed to use them at least so that you can learn and write what you are learning from this particular lesson. Before we go on with our lesson, I have some pictures on the screen. What can you see on the screen? Uh-huh. Yes, I have some pictures of children who are playing together. They are actually doing athletics. They are in a competition at school. Can you see them? Uh-huh. Oh, yes. And then we have some other children that are that are reading the word, they are reading the Bible together. And we also have some children that are playing together. And these children, they are friends. These children are very good friends. And I have this particular friend, her name was Amos. Amos had many friends. Amos is one of the children there that are playing. But you know what, one day, uh, the parents moved to another city. They moved to another town and they needed to transfer. And Amos now had many friends. One of the friends was called Luke. Now, Amos's friends were very sad that Amos was going to move to another place because they used to play together. They used to read the Bible together, even attend church together. So they were so, so worried. And in our lesson today, as we look at why Jesus promised the Holy Spirit, we want to look at the disciples of Jesus. Our scripture today, our Bible lesson today is based on John chapter 1, where Jesus was telling the disciples that he was leaving. He was going to leave them. I would like us to read some of the, the scriptures we read from John chapter 14, uh, verse 1 to 3. Jesus was talking to the disciples and he told them, Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go there to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. And you also may be where I am. Now, the disciples of Jesus had been with Jesus they had been friends with Jesus for three good years. They had walked everywhere with Jesus. As Jesus was killing the sick, as Jesus was feeding people, the many people that he fed, the 5,000 people, the, the disciples of Jesus had witnessed all the miracles that Jesus had done. And they were very happy that they were in the company of Jesus. But now it reached a time that Jesus was going to leave them. Jesus was going to heaven to prepare a place for them. And you know, Jesus was crucified. So the disciples were very sad. They were wondering, now what do we do? So Jesus tells them here, do not be worried. I am going to prepare a place for you. But because they were very sad, Jesus promised them. He talked to them and told them, I will give you a helper. I will give you the Holy Spirit. I will ask the Father to give you the Holy Spirit who will lead you, who will guide you. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit 
will be with them forever. But still they were worried. So Jesus says this uh, in John chapter 16, verse 7. This is what Jesus said. But very truly, I tell you, it is for you, for your good, that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I'll send him to you. Praise the Lord. So Jesus had to go so that the Holy Spirit, the advocate, also the helper. Another person calls him the helper. Jesus had to go so that the Holy Spirit can come. And do you know the reason why? It is because Jesus was the son of man. He was limited. He could not be everywhere at every time. But the Holy Spirit was going to be ever present, was going to be everywhere, and he was going to guide them in whatever they do. And so Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to come and be with them. And these were the last words that Jesus spoke to them in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Praise the Lord. Jesus wanted us, he wanted the disciples to witness, to tell others about him. And it was only through the power of the Holy Spirit that they were going to do that because the disciples were very, very afraid when Jesus was arrested and he was going to be crucified. Actually, one of the best friends of Jesus by the name Peter even denied Jesus because he was afraid that when Jesus was arrested, he was also going to be arrested and to suffer like Jesus. But now when Peter received the power by the Holy Spirit, as seen in chapter, chapter 2 of Acts, uh, Jesus said that they were going to receive power and ask the disciples to remain in Jerusalem until they receive the power. Now, in Acts chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says, Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3 says, verse 4 says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter spoke with a lot of boldness. He was able to witness. He did not now fear. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And he spoke with a lot of boldness. And that particular time, as he spoke to them, 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ. Praise the Lord. So Jesus promised the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can give us power. He can empower us in our daily lives to live Christian lives, to live the way Jesus wanted us to live. Actually, Jesus promised the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can help us to obey God, to obey God's commandments. Now, the Holy Spirit was also going to help us to serve God and was also going to guide us in, in the right way, in the new territories where we should preach the other to others about Christ. This is why Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to the disciples. Praise the Lord. Amen? Yeah, so the only way that we can serve God better, as Christians, we cannot serve God without the help of the Holy Spirit. Actually, when we receive Jesus Christ in our lives, all the believers receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in all believers, and this is one of the reasons why Jesus wanted the Holy Spirit to come, 
so that we can live empowered lives to do what Jesus commanded us so that we can obey God. So the only way we can receive power, the only way we can live with the Holy Spirit is by giving our lives to Christ. If you are there and you have never given your life to Christ, I would like you to pray after me. Heavenly Father, we are th I am thankful for teaching me that I need the Holy Spirit to guide me and to live in me. I come to you in repentance of my sins and pray that you forgive me my sins and make me your child. Help me so that the Holy Spirit can come to me. Forgive my sins and help me to have the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So if you have made this prayer, you are now a child of God and the Holy Spirit will come to you and will live in you. Now it is time for our memory verse. Our memory verse comes from, it comes from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. you will, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. Can we repeat the memory verse again? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem in, and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. Praise the Lord. Keep practicing the memory work. Now we want to do the, the craft. Our craft is more like a prayer. It's more like a prayer that is saying, I need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. So I want you to make a, a list of the things that you want the Holy Spirit to help you do. I have made a list of some things and uh, I would like you to, to have a look at them. Some of the things that I need the Holy Spirit to do. I need the Holy Spirit, I need the Holy Spirit to help me obey God. I need the Holy Spirit also to help me do a uh, witness to the others. Tell others about Christ. I also need the Holy Spirit to intercede for me, to pray for me. And I need the Holy Spirit to guide me in the right paths of righteousness and to help me get new friends, tell my friends and everyone about Jesus. So you can also make your list from the lesson that you have made and then you go to prayer. Tell God now, this is my prayer. I am praying that the Holy Spirit will guide me, will help me, and above all, that the Holy Spirit will give me power, will empower me like the way he empowered Peter so that I can, I can tell my friends, I can tell my neighbors, I can tell even my classmates about Jesus. And now that is the end of our lesson. Until next time, goodbye. God bless you so much.